that what they don't spend enough time paying attention to, but what is really evolving is our behavior. Okay. So for example, I tell people all the time, you know, um, I get my phone, right. You know, and I tell people like, if you're a local business, I will flat out that people are still trying to tell you organic matters. And I'm like, you know, you want to rank and all of this, you don't get your traffic from that. Not anymore. You know, you, you don't get it from the desktop for most businesses. If you're a local HVAC guy or a plumber or anything, the maps matter and the ads matter and the maps matter most. And you can use a map ad, you know, to get high up there. And the reason being is, is when I needed a plumber, I go and I open my Google maps app and I find a plumber there and I'm going to use my phone. And welcome to a new episode of digital copy marketing brew. And as always, I'm your host, Brett Dyster, and this we're going to be talking about digital marketing, SEO, local SEO a little bit, but also with, uh, with a touch of podcasting because it's the ever popular, how can we implement this type of industry for digital marketers that their boss is like, how can we get on podcasts? How can we do podcasts? But with me, I have Cash with me and he is, well, he has a vast knowledge in digital marketing, specifically SEO and local, and he just recently is getting into podcast production because it is an interesting slash fun industry to be a part of. I've done a little bit in the behind the scenes, and there's a lot of different things you do from editing, from producing, and also your SEO and making sure that you are up to date with where all your podcasts can be at. Like, for example, don't be on Google Podcasts anymore. Be on YouTube Music. That's like just what are your free advice with me. But welcome to the show, Cash. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes. The first question is all my guests is, are you a coffee or tea drinker? Oh, yeah. You know, coffee. It's definitely become a coffee thing you know, lately and way more into the afternoons than I uh, usually do. You know, it's, I don't know. I don't need the caffeine. It just, you know, right now it's cold weather. So, you know, it's a hot drink, you know, but uh, later in the year I'll slow down a bit and, uh, you know, but tea, I like, yeah, hot tea's okay. Prefer, you know, cold teas and stuff, you know, it's summer times. That's fair. Like I see or like cold, cold brew tea is the other version of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I think with the, you know, uh, obviously the Starbucks on every corner and things like that, there's so many ways to drink, you know, coffee and it's gotten kind of insane. And of course some of them, you know, like they start as coffee, but I'm not sure that they finish that way. Yeah. <laughs> by the time they've mixed everything else in. That's fair. That's fair. So I gave a brief explanation of your expertise. Can you give our listeners a little bit more about what you do? Well, let's say I'm a longtime digital marketer. Um, yeah, I started actually studying SEO back in 2007. Yeah. So I'm an old hand at it. Yeah, it's, um, I started, uh, my agency, which I recently exited, but I started it, uh, Titan digital in 2011. And, um, we grew from just myself to where we had 30 people. And then I was able to successfully sell it to another larger agency so that they could integrate everything. Yeah. And, and I moved into podcast production because it's a great way of, you know, for content creation, which, you know, everybody, if you're doing any kind of digital marketing, you know, content creation has been, you know, all the rage for years now in one form or another. Yeah. You know, so I've been, you know, I've been at SEO since not quite the beginning, but definitely it's a, uh, early, you know, stages of it. And so what has changed in SEO? Cause we talked before we were doing this podcast, like it feels like it changes every few months and, and, and specifically every year, but more specifically, it's like every three, every quarter, it seems like there's a new thing that you have to figure out. Well, here's the thing about SEO. So everybody thinks it changes, you know, like constantly, but I would argue that it doesn't as much as people think the nuances change. Okay. So what I mean by that is, you know, if you do local search and you want to rank somebody on maps, a lot of the tactics are still the same. You know, it's, you know, you need to optimize your site. You need to, you know, get backlinks, which are mostly directories. You know, you want high profile, you know, um, third party sources and stuff linking back to you. But, you know, you're trying to, you know, you can optimize your Google map listing, you know, so you can raise the ranks up. And, 
once in a while, Google will shake things up a bit for a specific segment. But when you think SEO, you have to realize that things are broken down in different ways. So organic is separate from, you know, the maps. And e-commerce is a different type of SEO than maps is, or even regular organic, because you're trying to get products to rank. You know, and so there, it's everything is a bit, you know, um, more nuanced than just saying, hey, it's SEO and it's changed. No, there's pieces of it that will change that affect certain things. We focused for years on local search and we had what, you know, what we would call national search because we didn't, there's not really a great way to term it. But if you are, a, for example, a product manufacturer and you want to rank, you know, uh, for something across the whole country, for example, um, I've worked with, uh, I used to work with one that did a, a company that did fuel injectors. Okay. So they're competent. They, they didn't care about selling locally. Uh, their buyers were all over the country. So they needed to rank high for fuel injectors or, you know, um, and I think they were specifically for like diesel engines or something. Um, so you end up trying to rank for that. They don't care about the maps. So if something changes in the maps, it didn't matter to them. You know, if something changed, yeah, that was e-commerce related because they would sell them online. Well, now they got to pay attention. So that's the thing is, is like, you know, SEO has evolved. Okay. But people, I think, and I think there's a little less of this going on. But for a long time, every, you know, remember back to the days of like the Penguin update and, you know, the different updates that Google would roll out, everybody would freak out, okay, and be like, oh, my God, you know, and some sites would, would be dramatically affected. But most of them, after the rankings were shook up, a lot of them ended up pretty much back in the same place. Or if they were going to get hit, you know, they had, they had done something that caused it. Yeah, you know, I worked with, you know, literally thousands of sites over the years and we never saw anything that shook it up that bad. Yeah. Because it was the nature of who we worked with, you know, but maps had been left alone until just recently for a long time. So yeah, I think, like I say, I don't think people pay enough attention to the nuance of SEO and that it comes into it uh, affected by different categories, you know, so you can change something here and other areas, it doesn't do anything, you know, it doesn't make any difference. So it's almost like the the umbrella of marketing. Marketing as a core hasn't really changed since it really its inception. There's like there's like core strategies like word of mouth, like the pricing, the placement, like location, like ad placements, all that stuff is still like core of it. But like digital marketing, SEO, and then for within SEO, e commerce, maps, and everything, it that has evolved. Is I think is the best way of saying. Yeah. It, right? Yeah, because things have been added to what is, like I say, when digital marketing started, you had, um, originally you had like banner ads and stuff, and that was the key, the core of what you had for um, pay-per-click ads. You know, you would literally buy an advertisement on a website. We didn't have things like programmatic or doing Google ads. You know, you, none of these things existed. It was, you know, very in its infancy with like Yahoo and stuff, you know, um, running essentially ad buying platforms, but you were literally buying it directly from that website. You know, and so that eventually evolved and SEO, everything was keyword stuffing back in the day. Just, you know, pop it in as many times as you can. And, you know, cause the algorithms were very primitive at the time, you know, now they're really sophisticated and, you know, try to do that now and you'll get nowhere. Um, you know, so Google and even Bing and stuff over time, they've, you know, kind of, they've been able to look at a specific area of, you know, what they're doing. Like, you know, you think about SEO, I mean, it's, you are literally doing the things that Google tells you not to do. You know, like, for example, you know, buying links and stuff, it goes on all the time. Google says don't do it, but in truth, they don't really have a, a great way to identify when, what's a paid link and what's not. So there's a huge market for it. And I don't know that they really care because, you know, like they can't stop it, you know, and really it's, you know, it's kind of a set of standards that they wrote, but it's not their internet. Okay. You know, <laughs> like Google may be all powerful and everything, but it is a search engine. And if you, um, 
you know, while they are powerful, people can, there are other search engines, you know, Bing right now is, you know, having a little bit of a, a run because, uh, you know, they've got the chat GPT integrated and stuff, and that can make a big difference to them. I think, like I say, we, over time, we've added tactics, you know, we've added things, you know, along the lines of, you know, content, um, content wasn't huge, you know, when we first got going. And then eventually you had social media comes along, right? You know, Facebook gets you know, really popular in 2011, 2012. You know, it came around in what's 05, 06. You know, but now suddenly social content and blogs have been around too. But now, hey, we can use all of this blog content to create backlink opportunities and stuff from an SEO standpoint. And then you have HubSpot comes along and says content marketing. And then it becomes a buzzword and everybody says, we got to do content marketing. Now you bring along chat GPT and well, I can create gobs of content at will. I mean, I could, I could write you 20 blog posts in all of like five minutes, you know? So to me that devalues the content, you know, because Google said, okay, you, you know, you can use that kind of content, no problem. But, you know, now they're saying, okay, well maybe it's like, it's going to be a little too much, you know, like they're not, they don't even know the total impact but people are using it left and right. I love the fact that you can do AI content because otherwise it, they've, they've had article spinners and stuff for years that would pump out tons of really horrible stuff for the purpose of backlinks. Yeah. So over time, there's been new strategies added you know, and something's opened up. Programmatic advertising is opened up to where, you know, um, a lot smaller businesses can use it. Yeah, you know, the ad platforms um, have gotten more sophisticated. Facebook needs to stop screwing with theirs because they are horrible about it every time they make a change. Yeah, you know, but like as an industry, as a um, um, as a like I say, digital marketing has truly evolved from where it was, and it will continue to evolve. But I've never put much stock into like or. I'm not going to, I don't lose, I've never lost sleep over worrying about the latest Google change. You know, that's the thing. Cause that stuff happens constantly. Yes. It, it does quite a bit, even from their own as an Android user, they've done like five different messaging apps in one time, which they finally just went to one. And I'm like, that's what you guys need to do is go to one, yeah. not five different things. Well, I'll give you the biggest thing is, is what, what people tend to, especially in digital marketing, that what they don't spend enough time paying attention to, but what is really evolving is our behavior. Okay. So for example, I tell people all the time, you know, um, I get my phone, right. You know, and I tell people like, if you're a local business, I will flat out that people are still trying to tell you organic matters. And I'm like, you know, you want to rank and all of this, you don't get your traffic from that. Not anymore. You know, you, you don't get it from the desktop for most businesses. If you're a local HVAC guy or a plumber or anything, the maps matter and the ads matter and the maps matter most. And you can use a map ad, you know, to get high up there. And the reason being is, is when I needed a plumber, I go and I open my Google Maps app and I find a plumber there and I'm going to use my phone. I'm not going to pull out my computer. You know, a lot of people don't even have one at home anymore. You know, like they have work computers and stuff like that, or they have a laptop, but that's not where you're going to go. My, I take my laptop home in case I'm going to do some work. I do not pull it out because I need to find a plumber. I go get my phone and I don't go do an organic search. I don't open Chrome. I open the map app, you know, or if you're like, you know, you could do Apple maps, you know, if you're using, uh, you know, an iPhone or something, but you're still going to do that. So that's where it matters that you be. And I think we, there's too many marketers and stuff. They're not realizing or not paying attention to how people actually search for things. You know, I say it's not even just, it's not the keyword so much like that matters, but you know, I say, I don't, most things, if I want to find it, if I need it locally, I'm going to go straight to the map and I'm going to do a search for it there. Yeah. If I, you know, whatever it might be, if I can go there or they can come to me, that's where I'm going. I'm going to go. Oh yeah. I mean, we could even do that with local SEO and just the, after the pandemic is that everybody wants it to come to them now and they don't really want to go out as often, not saying that they don't want to go out at all, but yeah, you're right. I mean, if I'm looking for a local coffee shop, 
I'm not going to go to Chrome. I'm going to go to Google Maps and say coffee shop. And then I hope I can find a yeah. good one through there. That's, I mean, I usually try to do like local independent ones because Starbucks yeah. is pl plentiful. Yeah, I want to see the reviews and stuff. I want to see the stars really fast. I want to say, okay, this guy's got a bunch. I like with the maps, um, I can scroll through. So, for example, if I was on desktop anyway, and being a digital marketer, of course, I pay attention to these things. But if I'm on desktop and I get the three-pack on an organic Chrome result, and then I got to dive in further, I don't do that with the map app. So I'm not worried as much. You can actually have quite a bit of value from a, a, a local business standpoint if you're the fifth or sixth person. Because if you've hammered your reviews and you've got a hundred of them, even if you're in the fifth spot, I'm going to notice that when I'm scrolling down. And I can, I'm going to scroll down really fast because I'm looking at you know who's open. I'm looking at who's got a high you know rating. You know th those are the things I want to see. And based on what I searched for is how the listings will pop up because people do not realize how well you can optimize a map listing. You know, you can go and do as much or more than you can to your website because I can target that thing to show up for all sorts of services. Yeah, because it's got tons of categories and the maps, it's searching through everything you've put on the profile. You know, your website's just backing it up you know, and other directories and stuff that you've also, you know, listed your services. You know, so that's the thing is people need to pay, you know, especially as marketers, uh, pay more attention to the actual user behavior. And the simplest thing to do is look at how you use stuff. Start there. Then, you know, ask some friends, see what they do. You know, what are the habits that we have developed? Because over time, you know, 10 years ago, yeah, we weren't doing that. In fact, was it... Um, Mobile responsive websites weren't even a big deal until, you know, like 2015, 2016, you know, and then eventually it's okay. Now we got to add in SSL certificates and things like that. But, you know, for a long time it didn't matter, but as maps got better, regardless, like whether it's Apple or Google, um, it may, it's made all the difference in, like I said, and so our behaviors have changed at one time when phones, you know, first came out and you, and you think of the, you know, doing searches that way, everybody was worried about, okay, they're doing searches on Chrome. We have a tendency, like people that are in SEO, they're still too focused on organic search. Yeah. And like I said, if I, if I'm looking up the Im information for something, then that's what I'm going to do. Or depending on what I'm doing, especially if it's a, you know, DIY, you know, project or something, then in which case I, I want to go find YouTube, you know, <laughs> so it depends on what you need. Yeah, I feel like for those local searches, it's like reviews, they want to know how close you are. And then for me as an Android user, I look how busy you're going to be because they do have a how busy are you right now. So I'll go, okay, how yeah. long is this going to take me? Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Yeah, some of these things are uh, getting, you know, Google's been spending some time with uh, the map system and making it more sophisticated and you're getting a lot more, you're getting more information, some of it being real time, depending on the, uh, the business itself, you know, and how much time they're taking, you know, so, and of course, you know, anything that requires directions and, you know, to get anywhere. I mean, I do a, a quite a bit of travel and everything. And anytime I'm in a city that I don't know, you know, they say, you know, top 10 restaurants and all that kind of thing. Yeah, forget it. I don't care about TripAdvisor, you know, in all honesty, uh, you know, if, because if I need a restaurant or something like that, I'm going to go to the maps now. I don't, this is why, I don't know why, you know, like Yelp is eventually going to have a, a you know, <laughs> I, I can't see them surviving long-term, you know, like they've been around quite a while, you know, 15 years or something like that. But I cannot see, you know, because I don't need it. You know, why do I want to go to a site just to see? I want to go because if I'm somewhere specific, I was in Orlando recently as at the PodFest convention. And um, we had a great spot. Great, you know, we got an Airbnb and every night was, okay, um, I want to be, you know, what's the restaurants nearby? And, you know, it's just going to be restaurants near me. And I'm looking at everything in walking distance and stuff. Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of variety. And then I'm going to the reviews, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, let's find something local. Okay. What do they got sorted by, you know, cuisine type or whatever, you know, but I say that's how we're doing things. And those evolutions take time and we don't even realize we're doing them, but eventually you notice and you realize, yeah, I used to do everything this way and now I don't. You know, and marketing has to keep up in how we're, you know, the user behavior 
And a lot of the times, especially smaller marketing companies or smaller businesses, they're always a step behind, it would it seems like. I mean, yeah, it, it sounds interesting what you said about Yelp, because in the beginning, Yelp and Foursquare were the thing where you check in, you become the, the mayor, which didn't really do anything for you anyways. It's just, I was yeah, the right. mayor, and it was Gimmick. like... Gimmicks. Oh, yeah, of what? A, a mayor of a restaurant that doesn't really care that you're a mayor of the restaurant at all. Yeah. And then and then Foursquare kind of split off into do its own things, but I never use it anymore. I barely use Yelp and I still have it on there. And I don't even know who I have it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't use I haven't used uh like Yelp's in years and uh Foursquare, I think they're they've almost become like a data aggregator, so they sell the data that they've collected because otherwise they wouldn't make any money. Um you know, but yeah, like I said that you know, and even like I say TripAdvisor sometimes can be okay for, you know, if you want to find, you know, um, things to do around you and, you know, that's where it can come into play. So that still has some relevance, you know, but this, you know, like I say our habits change and that's where marketers need to, you know, need to be, you know, cognizant of these things that happen. And, you know, you can just look around you and say, go back to, you know, phones and stuff, you know, we said, Hey, you know, if you looked at 2014 or so somewhere around there, it was probably 80% of searches happened on a desktop. 20% were on a laptop or uh, on a phone or maybe a tablet and tablets have always been a very small percentage of searches. You know, they thought it would take off and it never really did, you know, but so 2014, you probably had about an 80, 20 split. Now it's probably 80, 20 in reverse. And the 20% that's happening even on desktop is mostly work related. You know, let's say I use my desktop, you know, or my laptop anyway, um, for when I need to do informational searches, I want in-depth searches, I want a larger screen, I want to be able to see things, you know, that kind of stuff. But if I need something quick, there's no reason. And pivoting over to like SEO with podcasts, because you're doing podcast production and podcasting has been around since I believe my research is like 2005 was kind of around where it yeah, it's, started. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think really anybody noticed until about 2010, something like that. Yeah. That's yeah. about the same with blogs though. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's still relatively new, but not new, new in technology terms because of like everything else that's going on. But what can podcasters understand about SEO? Because there's like ID three tags, which, kind of were relevant but not really relevant but still people talk about it all the time there's i mean we compete against ourselves with that uh, seo because so, we put it on apple Podcasts and all that stuff so what what's that all about well in all honesty the way i approach podcasts is i don't worry about seo you know there's like three million so you have to think about it that i think the number right now is around 380 to four hundred thousand active podcasts at any one time yeah, and then you have about 3 million in the ecosystem. Everything that could be targeted has been targeted, you know, pretty much. Because um, even the stuff that's not actively recording is still going to be there. You know, so my recommendation with people is focus on the social aspect. Yeah, you know, because you can build up an audience over time. Podcasts are great for two things in my opinion one you build an audience okay and you can be that thought leader and all that but also the networking opportunities because you can meet more businesses business owners through podcasting than i've ever seen um to me it's way better than any networking event you'll ever go to so as a business use it's an awesome way of doing things because think about this you know We've never met, right? You know, I could walk into a networking event. Let's say it's a local chamber of commerce event and it's got 50 people for whatever going on, you know, some after hours thing, right? What's going to happen for most people, okay? You're going to have a few extroverts that can network with everybody in the room, but the majority are not. Um, so they'll gravitate to people they know, you know, already and they'll talk them up and then, the, you know, and they may just stay there and blow the entire time. They may gravitate to somebody they know that's talking to somebody they don't know and then hope for an introduction. Um, and maybe they'll network with a few people and get five minutes to talk to them. Okay. Podcasts, no matter what, you know, whether you're running a show and bringing on guests or you're, you know, uh, being a guest on shows, I do both. Yeah. You know, 
Well, you're going to meet people that potentially you can collaborate with, and you just have to consider how you use your podcast. And if you think about, you know, they say this is why the social aspect, even on a local level, the social can come into play. One of the suggestions I had for somebody the other day was, um, like, let's say you ran, you know, just as an idea, say you ran a moving company moving companies rather than going to networking events. Well, they want to re they want to network with realtors, real estate brokers, you know, mortgage guys, all of those people, right? Everybody that helps a homeowner, you know, buy and sell houses. Well, run a podcast about your local area. Yeah. And bring in guests that are realtors from the local area. And suddenly you become this like resource, you know, for people to listen to that might be moving, you know, might already live in the area, but are moving from one house to another, any number of things. But the idea is that you can talk to those people, you know, by bringing them on the show. And then a lot of, um, a lot of cities and small towns have like the local person that's kind of taking control of the social media presence. It's not the government necessarily. Um, back in the uh, early, you know, yeah, 2010, 20, you know, through like 2014, there, are, there were some companies that said, hey, we could own the local presence, put out, you know, kind of news and stories and everything and eventually sell advertising. Well, those entities, a lot of them still exist. You know, it's somebody, you know, we've got somebody here where I live and he does local news stories and video interviews and all sorts, but he's built such a following on the page that he makes, you know, does pretty well, you know, because there's so many people that follow that local Facebook page. And he owns, he actually, I live in a town called Murfreesboro and he actually owns murfreesboro.com, not the city, <laughs> you know, which is hilarious, I think. Um, but you know, you can partner with those kinds of organizations to help put that content out. And you, you know, it goes back to traditional marketing in, in many ways. If you, you know, you ever remember when um, you had like, uh, you go down the and see a bunch of billboards and the billboards all had like the local realtor and everybody, you know, eventually knew who that person was. You know, like there's always a few local names that everybody knows who they are, right? You remember, remember seeing that kind of stuff back in the day? Yeah, I, I remember that stuff like the big the big ones. Plus, I mean, they still do the mailers as well. So you always have those that local mm -hmm. touch. Yeah. And so that's the idea, you know, is if you use podcasting, you can do it that way. And then through social media, yeah, now your podcast can become known. You know, it doesn't you don't need a national audience, you can have a local audience. You know, in which case though, you become that person, that known realtor mortgage broker, moving company, plumber, whatever it might be. But you're, you know, able to put the brand out there even, you know, even better. Individual, it's great for individual branding that way. You know, so I say it's just because from an SEO standpoint, for podcasts to rank, you know, you want to end up ranking on the platforms. Well, there's only a couple of platforms that matter, you know, Apple being the primary one and Spotify. You know, any other platform, you know, there's other distribution, but ranking on those aren't going to be a ton of listenership. So, you know, but even on Apple, there's only so many podcasts that it can, you know, rank really high. That's, it's a, you know, a uh, clogged up space, you know, so there, but there's other reasons you do it, not for the SEO purposes necessarily. Yeah. I mean, there's there's so many out there, but yeah, I would say the top three is probably YouTube Music, uh, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. It's probably going to be your main three that are actually going to be the traction and actually rank you. That's why I said podcasters are almost, if you have your own website, you're fighting against yourself on the other platforms because you want to yeah. give your podcasts away. So SEO almost seems like a little irrelevant because you may want people to go to your website, but you still want to rank on those podcasting sites yeah you want to rank on the sites uh but you know like i say when it comes like youtube's great for it now because video podcasts have become you know all the rage i'm not i'm not totally sure why two people want to watch us talk <laughs> you know like i love listening to podcasts but i do it while i'm driving typically you know in which case you know like i say i just want the audio but you know some people you know and in some cases people are still just they're using youtube and putting it on in the background you know it's like you know when I throw a baseball game up, I'm not really watching the game. I'm really just listening, you know, while I do something else. Um, you know, so, 
but you can build audiences and that's the thing about it. Anything social, you can build those followings and then whatever your you know, goal is to have them do that, that audience, you can, you know, push them to do that, you know, and send them back to your own website or, you know, whatever you might want to do. But I say, because of platforms like YouTube, you know, and combined with Apple, combined with Spotify, your reach, it can be really big. You know, you just, get, you have to give it time. Yeah, there's a lot of investment. That's the one thing about podcasts is there's, you know, time or money, but you're going to put, you know, it's going to be a bit of both, you know, to get it done. And you've got to give it, you know, you need to understand that you have to have a strategy behind it, an end goal. What are you trying to accomplish? You know, to, to be able to see, hey, you know, if I do these things right, okay, then, you know, um, this is what I can get out of it in the end. And so, I mean, what I've heard, and I've read some books about it, just because I, when I get into it, I just really want to know as much as I can. So, I mean, for those wanting to start, let's just say, should they niche themselves into a specific, like industry and not do? Because when I talk to a lot of people, are like, I just want to be for everybody. I'm like, well, that's not going to work because you can't be nah. for everybody. Um, yeah, you want to understand like who you're trying to connect with and stuff. So, for example, I run a podcast where I talk to um, franchises. You know, we've got something like 3,000 in the uh, country, you know, like, and what I try to do is I, like, I said, okay, I could talk to a lot of franchises. There's plenty of those, but I only run so many episodes every month. So what I did is um, I focused on emerging brands. So younger franchises, you know, they might have a couple of hundred, you know, locations. They might have 10. Yeah, but I don't like there's some that have been around for like 30 years and, you know, they're going to have a thousand locations. That's not who I want to have on there. And we're building an audience for that particular show of people that might be, you know, that want to be entrepreneurs. And I do the show with the idea that I can talk to, you know, the franchise development people and the founders is who I typically have as guests. Sometimes I'll have two or three people on. Um and then we can go through what the concept is. What's the opportunity? What's the investment? How much, you know, if possible, how much money can you make? You know, the, what's the history, you know, behind it? Um, and we want to know the business model. And I just tell whenever I have the guest on, which for me is a great opportunity to network with the guests. I'm looking to potentially do some franchise investing of my own. So I get the inside look that I want to. Uh, but when I have them on, I tell them, I said, look, if you were, you know, franchises, they do uh franchise shows, which are, you know, conventions where the public can come check out concepts. And so I said, you know, I asked the questions as if I had just walked up to a booth at a franchise show and, you know, and I'm going to ask you these things and that puts them in a comfort zone. So, you know, that's how I see it. And every show has got to be like, whatever you're going to do, you want to have a point behind it. And yeah, you can get specific. You don't have to remember if you also want to take advantage of the networking opportunities, not being so broad, the networking will be more focused. Like I say a moving company could offer, you know, up a show and they just interview local realtors. They don't have to interview other moving companies. They don't, that's not where their business is going to be, but they want to have a, a market related show. What's the housing market like wherever, right? Okay. Well, if I'm interviewing these, all these, uh, you know, real estate agents, they're going to give me the information I need. And we can talk about the trends. We can talk about new developments that are happening. You know, like, like literally new subdivisions being built. What's the advantages of this? What are the price ranges? You know, where's the hot areas in town? You know, all of these things. And you can bring on different real estate agents and get different points of view. But you've accomplished the goal of networking and you've kept your show focused, which, you know, makes it so that people would want to listen because they know what, they, know what to expect when they do. And so where do you see like for yourself as you're in doing a podcast and podcast production, where do you see this going for podcasting? Do you see it more social? I mean, we have podcast 2.0 supposedly coming out. That's, that's new features and tools for podcasters and listeners. Do you see it better analytics because it's still not great analytics. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The analytics I've found that, you know, they're really iffy. Um, on the number of listens, like, you know, for one, uh, even if you run the podcast, how much can you trust the stats? 
you know, for how many listens you actually get. And then what I found is any kind of, and this was always the case of, in the in the way of website traffic and stuff too. It's very hard to determine how much anything gets, you know, whether it's a visitor to a website or a listen on a podcast. So third party tools that are estimating how many listens a particular show would get, be like, yeah, th there's no way, you know, because they tend to overestimate, not under. You know, they, in fact, the overestimating can be really over, you know, so you have to be wary of those things. I don't think having seen website traffic tools for years, I don't think they're going to make it, they're, they're not going to be able to make it much better. You know, if the platforms don't give third party access to, you know, if Apple doesn't share with some other, you know, company, the actual data, you know, then they're not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, they can't make it better. It's always going to be a just a educated guess. Yeah, and unfortunately, I don't see that changing much. Just ha you know, having seen over the years where website traffic never got better. Yeah, it's you know, it, there's a years ago that, and I think it still exists. There's a ranking called a um, was it? It's not Amazon. It was called Alexa. Yeah, and uh, it was actually the like rankings of the most popular sites in the world. Okay, I think it was Alexa. Um, and that thing was so inaccurate. I think at one time, um, I had a site that ranked in like the top 500 or something. And I'm like, yeah, there's no way, <laughs> you know, of, of like all the sites, this was like years ago, you know, and it just hasn't, you know, that's one of the hardest things, you know, for any, you know, uh, any system to be able to, you know, accurately predict or determine. And so people are going, man, you got a lot of great information. Where can I find you online to learn more about what you do? Well, on the podcast side, uh, you can find me at Titan Media Works with an X dot com. Yeah, that's easy. And of course, my email is cash at Titan Media Works. I'm the easiest guy to find on LinkedIn, I think, too, because you can literally just look up Cash Miller and you're going to find me because my LinkedIn is like, I think they do LinkedIn dot com forward slash in forward slash and then it'd be like your name and a bunch of numbers and everything and mine is literally just cash.miller yeah so yeah i've been on linkedin a long time so i guess i got the first slot and i'm probably the only cash miller on there i would hope you know so um that makes it a lot easier i've seen people with like these numbers or, or you know because you get a lot of people with similar Not that's always So, you know, they can check it out. And if they ever needed help on, on the podcast side, they can reach out to me if they want, you know, um, advice. If you're an agency owner, I'm doing some consulting for some agencies and stuff now, now that I've exited my own. All right, Cash, thank you for joining Digital Coffee Marketing Brew and sharing your knowledge on SEO, local SEO and podcasting. Hey, it's great to be here. I always, I love going on other people's shows. And thank you, as always. Please subscribe to this podcast on all your favorite podcasting apps. Leave a five-star review. It really does help with the rankings. But join us next week as we talk to another great thought in the PR and marketing industry. All right, guys, stay safe. Get to understanding your SEO. And if you're in the podcasting industry, that and Google Maps. Make sure you're on top of that. And see you next week. Later.